Well, good morning and welcome to Leduc Fellowship Church. It's awesome to see everybody here this morning. Um, the day's a little windy, a little cooler. We needed it. Hopefully the rain kind of comes and puts all the fires out, but uh, you don't usually hear me say that. But uh, would you please stand with us and uh, join us in worship?
around you and thank you everybody online who's joined us as well welcome thank you Well, good morning, Leduc Fellowship Church. Good morning, Penny. Well, <laughs> welcome, welcome on this wonderful Sunday morning, whatever the weather is outside. It is wonderful to be gathered here for worship and fellowship and all the exciting things that God has in store for us this morning. My name is Pastor Dustin. I'm one of the pastors here, and we are just excited to be able to join in with all the things that God is going to lead us through today. But as we do that, we have a number of things that we want to draw to your attention by way of announcements. And last Sunday, we had our newcomers lunch after the service and just had an amazing time there. So thank you to all those who brought, brought soup and helped out with that. It was a wonderful time just sharing the story of LFC and what God has done and is doing in and through this church family and our community community and in building the kingdom. And it's very, very exciting to always be able to do that. So welcome, welcome to our newcomers. It was very, very fun to be able to sit and talk with you about that uh, and just to continue to dig in uh, in the directions that God is leading us together. But as we move forward this morning, we have a very special announcement to make, and we're going to invite Paige Gasky and Regan Ullman onto the stage here this morning. And uh, we have uh, been enjoying uh, Paige's service here for the last year. She has been our children's ministry support staff person, and she is going to be moving forward in her life, and we are excited to invite Regan Ullman to be the new children's ministry support staff person. So welcome, Regan. Thank you, Paige. We appreciate them so much. And of course, I forgot something. I always have to forget something. So, Paige, we have a gift for you. Reagan, we don't have anything. You haven't earned anything yet. So, uh, <laughs> we are... <laughs> 
But we are just so thankful, Paige, for everything that you have uh, done for us, especially as Pastor Rebecca was off uh, with new baby, and we just uh, are so uh, appreciative of the amazing efforts that she has done. She has been an amazing part of that team and just done a wonderful job serving those kids and those families. And Regan, we are excited just to bring you on the team and to walk together and just enjoy uh, things that God has for us there. But uh, let me just pray over you guys, and uh, then we'll continue on, and Regan, get back to work after that. So, <sighs> Father God, we just thank you for uh, what it is to be a part of your kingdom, and especially as a staff team, the privilege that it is to serve here, uh, this church family, it is such a gift, uh, such a wonderfully supportive and affirming church family, and so to, to serve here is just uh, what a blessing, and so we just thank you uh, for Paige and for the journey that she has been on, that she was willing to be a part of this team for the last year, and the incredible life and energy that she brought, and the way she was able to disciple those kids, what a gift. And so we just pray blessings on her as she moves forward, and we just pray that, God, that you will continue to lead and guide and direct in all the ways that you are going to be continuing to build your spirit in her and the mission and the ministry that you have given to her. And God, we lift up Reagan as she comes on board, and we just, God, pray for your wisdom and your grace, your spirit upon her, God, that she will be empowered to serve and disciple and build into these families and these kids, that they will experience the love of Jesus when they are with her. And so, God, we just thank you for the things you are doing. We ask your blessings and protection upon them as we move forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you guys so much, and we appreciate you lots there. Um, as we, yes, amen. Uh, as we uh, had last week, we have our print newsletter for May out there, so there's lots of details of all the things we're going to talk about in there. I encourage you to grab one of those and read through that if you haven't had a chance already. Uh, but as we continue forward as well, we're going to invite... I, I lied to you, Kevin. I'm sorry. Uh, we are actually using this microphone this morning, and he's, he's scrambling back there. But we're going to invite Penny up, and she has an announcement about our women's ministry uh, event that is coming up later this month. Good morning. Thank you. <laughs> um, just wanted to invite all of the women in our church to an event we're having at the end of the month. We enjoyed each other's company so much in February at our day retreat. Uh, it's definitely time to do something else. So we're going to do an afternoon tea. And on the welcome desk, you will have there are some of these cards this size available as an invite. Last week, there was a little miscommunication between the team. And these got handed out as invites. These are actually tickets. So if you got some of these last week and you took it thinking you were going to pass them along to friends, that's totally fine. Just let us know how many of the ones you took will actually be serving as tickets because we need to know how many people are coming so we can prepare properly. But we're super excited for this event. It's going to be just a really casual, low-key couple hours in an afternoon. The last Saturday of May, the 27th, not the 28th, like it says in the newsletter Dustin just talked about, um, at 1.30 p.m., and we're going to just share some great company. We're going to have just a little bit of worship together, and Ruth Johnstone, <coughs> is she here today? I don't think so, is going to share w from her heart with us that day just a little bit. And so we're really looking forward to that time together. Uh, if you have any questions at all, you can contact Myself or Don Ham or Carla Strauss, if you don't know who they are, you've seen me now, you know who I am. My name is Penny, in case you missed that. Um, so we just are really looking forward to this time together and invite you to invite your friends, uh, women of all ages, bring whoever you want, as long as you are comfortable to sit and enjoy yourself that afternoon. And uh, we're going to have a great time. So we'll see you there. Awesome. And my wife's not in here right now, so we can't throw her under the bus too hard as the one who was handing out uh, tickets like invitations, but uh, <laughs> may or may not have been what happened, and uh, we're learning and growing. And as much as I draw attention to the May newsletter, don't actually pay that close of attention to it then, because we don't even have the right information in there. But we're doing our best, right? We proofread this thing and everything, and there's a lot of numbers, and numbers are hard. So... Um, but yes, we are excited for that. It'll be a wonderful time of, of just uh, sharing relationship and conversation and community together and it's a very, very special time there. Speaking of just uh, food and fellowship, we have our seniors luncheon coming up as well on Thursday, May 18th. 
So in about a week and a half here, and if you are interested in being a part of that, there will be some phone calling happening, so uh, you will be invited there. But if you have never been, then you might not get a phone call, and you can just contact the office, and we would love to get you plugged in for that. It's a wonderful time of just eating together, food and fellowship, a little bit of worship, and they'll have a, a speaker come in and just to give a little bit of encouragement. And uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful time. Uh, we have great turnouts for those things, so I encourage you uh, to check that out. Seniors Luncheon, if you're interested, you can check out information on the website as well. And as I say, you can talk to the office if you need more info or would like to let us know that you'd like to come there as well. Um, and as we continue forward too, again, we just see all the different things that are happening around here. And we see some, we have a, a new art display uh, out front of the building that you might have noticed on the way in this morning. And if you didn't, that's good. Uh, but we have, uh, we've, again, our community is hurting and there's a lot of things going on. We had the broken glass a couple of weeks ago and now a little bit of spray paint on the outside of the building as well. Fortunately on a window, which should clean up just fine. But uh, we just need to be continuing to lift up our community in prayer and People that are flailing, uh, they are just uh, seeking any way to express themselves and find any semblance of confidence and peace and identity, and we just want to be a part of bringing the love of Jesus into their life, that in submission to Him, they can experience abundant life, and so we want to be continuing to lift that up, but there's a number of things that we want to be praying through together this morning as we continue in worship and prayer, and uh, firstly, we want to be lifting up uh, just all of those who are affected by the fires around our province. There's so many uh, that have been even evacuated and, and very scary things like that. Uh, our own uh, Ron Ullman had a little bit of an experience here this week as well and lost a shed and some corrals and a few things. Fortunately, the wind was going the right way. They didn't go to the house or things like that, but uh, it is very immediately in our own church family here and all around the province, so many that are hurt and affected by these things. So we just want to be praying safety for the firefighters and all those working so hard to protect and the very difficult decisions that need to be made around those things, but just for peace and grace. And for rain, we had a sprinkle last night, but hardly enough there. And so just for rain around the province as well to settle down this emergency as well. But we want to be continuing praying for uh, so many in our church family as well, continuing for Alver Hag as he uh, struggles through these uh, cancer diagnoses and things uh, looking very scary there. Uh, for Scott Weaver, as they continue to uh, explore what's going on and find the best ways and treatments for him as well, and for the family there too. Uh, for, again, Rita Stegerman and uh, Dave Eastman as he recovers, and Tom and uh, Ron and, and uh, Denise Blakeborough is in the hospital now, and they're not entirely sure what's going on there. There's also so many needs and hurts in our church family and so many others as well. So as we continue in worship this morning, let's just spend some time lifting all of these things before our Heavenly Father who hears us and answers our prayers. Let's pray together. Father God, we come before you this morning and we just lay all of these things at your feet. We submit and we lift your name high, God, and we say in all of this, thank you. God, we say that you are good. We declare that you are God, that you are in control, that your spirit is alive and at work, and you are drawing people to yourself. You are transforming lives. You are bringing your hope and salvation into the world, and God, we want to be a part of that. We want to be a part of bringing your presence into the world, into the lives of people, and so God, we just pray that you will open our eyes to see how we can be at work. God, we lift up our community this morning and just a little bit of you know, experiences and vandalism we've had here, God, are just a tiny piece of the hurt that we see all around us. And God, we pray for peace. We pray for just a moving of your spirit in people's lives, God, that you will bring that hope that they won't need to act out in these ways. And God, that you can use us to bring that hope, that we can share your love and allow people to find that belonging that they so desperately search for. God, we want to lift up these uh, fires and the uh, amazing, brave firefighters and emergency workers who are working so hard. But God, this is uh, an overwhelming thing. And so God, we just pray your grace. We pray for rain. We pray for safety. We pray for an end to these fires and that God, things would settle down, that you can uh, protect and preserve people's lives and homes. And, and God, that we can uh, know that you are there with us in that. And God, we just pray for health, mental and physical and emotional. And God, there's uh, a lot of struggling and hurting people right now. But again, we want to lift up uh, Denise and we want to lift up Tom and Ron and Rita and Dave and uh, Scott and so many others, God, that are hurting. We just pray for healing. 
We pray, God, for miracles. We know that you can work miracles. We have seen you work miracles here, and we believe and know that you will respond as you see fit. But, Father, ultimately we know that all of this is a stall as we wait for eternity. And so, God, we thank you and we praise you for the work of your Son that we have eternal life. And God, we pray for that peace and knowledge here that as we journey together, we can share that hope with each other and experience your love and grace there. So God, as we continue in worship this morning, as we declare these things in these songs, God, we pray that your spirit would be alive, that you would move among us, God, that you would draw us close, that we would experience your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Would you please stand with us again and join us in worship again. I'm fighting a battle you've already won. No matter what comes my way, I will overcome. I don't know what you're doing, but I know what you've done. I'm fighting a battle you've already won. There's
Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy.
One day the grave could conceal him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. Then he arose over death he had conquered. Now is a sin. Amen, amen. Let's pray together as we continue this morning. Father God, what a glorious day that indeed will be, and we can scarcely imagine all the things that you have in store for us, the power of your presence and just the opportunity to enjoy eternity with you in worship, in fellowship, in community, in connection. And God, we look forward to that day, that glorious day. And God, as we are here now, we still walk and we hurt and we struggle and we have so much that we don't understand and so much we choose not to understand. But God, this morning we pray that you would open our hearts and our minds to hear from you, God, that as we explore your word together, that you would draw us a little more close that we can love you a little more deeply and share you a little more fully. And God, we just ask that you would speak and move in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. And yes, our big kids, our grade four, five, six, can head back to their program this morning. And there's some wonderful things in store for you guys back there with Pastor Rebecca and the team. But as we begin this morning, let's uh, open our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And we're going to look at this passage again. We're going to get it stuck in our brains eventually here if we look at it enough time. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14, and this is kind of where we're building around for this series right now. Paul says this to us, he says, For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died, and he died for all. That those who live should no longer live for themselves, but who for him who died for them and was raised again. So, from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. 
All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and not counting people's sins against them and has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God is shaping us and molding us, and we are dying to ourselves more and more, and we're seeing Him come alive in us more and more. And we're starting to see people like He does a little bit more, not like the world does, with His eyes, seeing His image in them and wanting them to see it too, imploring them on His behalf to be reconciled to their Creator, to see the sacred presence that God has placed in them come alive with the Holy Spirit. Amen? God is alive and He's moving and this mission He has for us is getting more and more exciting. This year, We've been looking at this idea of sacred presence and what it means to be and to bring a spiritual presence into the lives of the people around us, opening their eyes to the reality of who God is and what He desires for them, the abundant life that He created for them, a life of freedom and hope and fulfillment and joy. And it feels to me like it's becoming clearer and clearer through the stories that we've looked at, the tools that God has given us in His Spirit, the ways He's revealed Himself in the world and in His Word, God's presence is here all around us, all the time, and it feels like I'm able to see it more and more clearly as we continue along in this journey, the things that He's inviting us into to bring into people's lives, how His presence alive in us brings life to others. As we are yielded to Him, submitted to Him. I had a number of conversations this week and the same verse kept coming up in those conversations. It almost like God was trying to tell me something and maybe the other person as I was talking to them as well. But as I was talking to different people about different things and Galatians 2.20 kept coming up in those conversations, kept coming to my mind of the, the idea being clear in those conversations, for I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave His life for me. That's what we're trying to talk about here. That's what Paul is talking about in 2 Corinthians 5. That's what Jesus was trying to help us see. It's Him. It's not us. It's His presence, His Spirit alive in us, expressed so uniquely through each of us that brings life into the world. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. Christ lives in me, through me, by faith and the power of His Spirit. That's what we're trying to see, what God wants us to know. And I want that more and more. And as I've been praying into this more and more in my own life, I'm seeing it happen. The stories I'm hearing in our church family are so exciting too. God is moving. And He's inviting you on this journey too. And if you've been hesitating to get on board or you just got here, let's go, come with us, let's see what God's Spirit will do when we become attuned to the sacred, His presence alive all around us. So that's what we're trying to understand now in this series. We want to understand what this is actually going to look like, what we're actually supposed to do what He is actually going to do through us if we allow Him to take our life and make it His, that 
we can live the practices of the presence of God, to see lives, to see the world transformed in His image too. And so we started with serving. And we saw that it's the very nature of Jesus Himself, that servant heart. And we talked about teaching, telling people about the good news of new life. And last week we talked about listening. Seeing the image of God placed in each person and showing them the love and value that God has for them. The power of truly hearing them. And now this week we're going to look at the practice of caring. Of loving sacrificially. And taking that heart that Jesus has, those truths that he's given us to speak, the love that he has to hear them, and living all of that out as we connect with their heart and their life and their need and caring for them. Living the love of Jesus for the person he has created in his image. It's going to be a little bit intense because we're going to find pretty quickly that this is not just a hope. It's not an aspiration. It's not just trying to be nice or just giving a hug once in a while or just trying to make someone feel good. This is a command from Jesus himself and a command that has some pretty serious consequences if we disobey. Jesus takes people so seriously and he feels their needs and their hurts so deeply and he is commanding us to be his presence and care for them like he would and like we would do for him. Turn with me this morning to Matthew chapter 25. We're going to look at a very famous passage of scripture here, one that might be familiar to you, but one that we don't often read the whole thing. And we do that with scripture sometimes, don't we? We read the half that sounds good, that's encouraging. The part of the psalm that calls out to God for help and gives him worship, and we kind of breeze past the part where God's holiness and justice brings wrath against sin and against wickedness. We like the help. We like the worship. We don't like the consequences as much sometimes for our disobedience. But we have to read the whole thing. God has given us what He has given us in His Word on purpose to help us understand who He is. And so we have to see God's whole heart Grace and perfection, mercy and holiness. He is love. But love isn't just nice. His love is holy, and holiness is wonderful and terrifying. This passage in Matthew 25 comes at the end of a long portion of teaching that we have as Jesus was coming right to the time of the crucifixion. And this aspect is going to be a big deal. Again, when we read a verse a day or a chapter a day, sometimes we don't see the whole picture that the gospel writer is painting for us here. In our discipline of reading Scripture, I would encourage you to build into your practice times to read a whole book. Set aside that time, not all the time, But we have to zoom out sometimes and and see how these stories all fit and flow together because, again, Jesus is about to be arrested and crucified. And so he has this long section of teaching here going all the way back to chapter 21 from the triumphal entry to the Passover and his arrest. And Jesus knows what's coming the whole time. And so he's speaking these last things, parables and teachings and prophecy. And the last thing that Matthew has him saying to them is this. Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. 
all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you from since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothed you? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. And he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did you see, we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? And he will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. What? A passage. Isn't that fascinating? The last thing he says to them before they go for the last supper and to the cross. This is the last thing Matthew records before Jesus is crucified. This is what God wanted him to write down. Do we see? Do we get it? God is painting a picture for us here of what he means for our life to look like. What eternity looks like. What he created this to be. And how we are supposed to be living within all of this. And does it sound like he's messing around? He begins with this powerful picture of the Son of Man coming at the end of time, a vivid picture that evokes fear and awe and worship. But it differs a little bit from some of the other pictures we get in places like Philippians 2, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. A powerful passage as well. And we see in both places the power, the glory, the majesty of Jesus, the authority and the finality of what He will do. Let it be, Lord. But here in Matthew 25, Jesus Himself goes further. And He shows us there is a distinction, a division in His mind, in His kingdom, between those that He will accept and those that He will not. And it's not race. It's not language. It's not culture. And in this place where Jesus Himself is talking, it's not belief or specific theology. It's a soft heart that cares for others. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this not from yourselves, it is the gift from God, not by works so that no one can boast. Amen and absolutely. 
We cannot earn our salvation. Our works do not save us. It is the blood of Jesus shed for us alone that covers our sin and sets us free. But, and, whatever word you want here, Jesus himself here shows us that a heart transformed by him will live like this. This is how much it matters to him. We cannot move past this. Jesus himself is telling you about the end of all things when he will judge each person according to his right and his authority in his perfect grace and unquestionable holiness. And this is what he will see. How did you care for others? I was hungry. And you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick in prison and you came to visit me. Whatever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Do we see? Do we understand just how deeply Jesus cares about us caring for others? And what it means for us. It's not about just doing stuff. He is describing what relationship with Him looks like. What happens when we live like this. When we see people like this. When we love people like this. When our life stops being about us and starts being about them. Doing these things is worship. It's relationship with God Himself. It's not even a sacrifice. It's not a burden. It's not an effort. It's life. It's what matters. This is what matters to Jesus Himself. We are so caught up in work and jobs and saving for retirement and trying to have a little vacation and getting a baseball practice and going to soccer tournaments and we invest endless energy in programs and schedules and in our own lives with ourselves when God is trying so hard for us to see others. Over and over and over in Scripture, he begs us to see people. Trying to get us to understand what he cares about. And we try to do anything but. We build cathedrals and we write beautiful songs and profound and powerful sermons like this one. And we write books and lectures and hold retreats and we do all these things about who God is, anything but giving our lives for others. And not to die for them, but the much, much harder thing of living for them. And all those things are good things, wonderful things. Art and music and beauty and theology and learning and study are important and wonderful. But he is telling us himself that the place we truly find him is with others. James chapter 1. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Religion that our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this. To look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Isaiah chapter 1, the multitude of your sacrifices, what are they to me, says the Lord. Stop bringing meaningless offerings. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds from my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek Justice, defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless, plead the case of the widow. Ezekiel 16, now this was the sin of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters were arrogant, overfed, unconcerned. They did not help the poor and needy. He's talking about the punishment of Sodom and Gomorrah, and that's what he cared about. 
Hebrews 13, keep on loving one another. Brothers and sisters, do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. His command is not a burden, it's a gift. We are serving Jesus himself and heavenly beings, perhaps, without even knowing. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison, and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. Proverbs 19, whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord and he will repay him for his deed. Philippians 2, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. James 5, therefore confess your sins to each other, pray for each other that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Galatians 6, carry each other's burdens and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. It's almost like God is trying to tell us something. And we will try anything and everything but. This is just a taste of what God has said to us. This clearly matters to Him so much. This is His heart. And this is what frustrates Him when we refuse to see and when we bring all kinds of performative religious actions, but we don't listen. This is more than an encouragement and a hope from Him. It's a command and even a warning. Isaiah 58. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways. As if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please, and you exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends with quarreling and strife and striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fasting I have chosen only a day for people to humble themselves? And it's only bowing one's head like a reed for lying in sackcloth and ashes. Is this what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is this not the fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice? And untie the cords of the yoke to set the oppressed free and break every yoke. Is it not to share your food with the hungry, to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? What God wants is not what we want. What God wants is not what we often think. His heart is not the same as ours and we need to listen and line ourselves up with Him. We need to hear what He's saying here, what He's calling us to, because it matters. Because there are consequences if we don't. Then He will say to those on His left, Depart from Me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels, because you believed the wrong things, For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick in prison, and you did not look after me. And they also will answer, Lord, when did we see you? Hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? And he will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Jesus himself said those words. And I can qualify them all over the place again with Ephesians 2 and Romans 8 and Galatians 2 and on and on and on. But Jesus himself said those words. God has told us what to do. Jesus is telling you what your life should look like and he wants you to sit with that. To think about that, to pray about it and submit. 
Will you listen? Will you obey? And these things are happening here. We're involved with the hub and the food bank. We've collected clothes and built homes and helped people in crisis. We've worked with compassion and supported kids and Operation Christmas Child and even just giving gifts and sharing the gospel. We are trying. Our church is about mission, about community, about serving, and about caring. But we are not done. And there's more work for us to do that God is preparing for us to do. And He is inviting us, inviting you to step into it with Him. And if you're feeling convicted this morning, maybe Jesus is asking you this question. How are you organizing your life? Who is your life about? Is it about yourself or about Him? And who should it be about? You can't save the world. We can't save the world. Only Jesus can. But if we are going to practice the presence of God, if the presence of Jesus is alive in you, we will care for others. We have to. So who is Jesus putting in front of you? Who has he given you to care for? Do you see his presence, his image in them? And are you willing to give your life for them? Not to die for them, but to live for them. This morning we're going to celebrate communion. And as we consider these things, let's pray together and invite Jesus to help us understand more deeply and clearly what this life that he has given us is for, what we're supposed to look like, how He wants us to see others because He died for them too and loves them so much more than we can understand. And if He has given us His heart, if we are alive in Him, then we need to love them and care for them too. If, you've, if you're newer, newer here, we have a number of crosses set up around the room. We invite you as our worship team plays this morning to take that time and come as you feel led to one of these places and take the elements. The flesh, the body that was broken for us, the bread, the juice, his blood that was shed for us covering our sin and that we understand that this new life is not for us. It's for him to be shared with others. So take this morning, time this morning, let's spend some time praying about that. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for these warnings and this clear picture that you have given us of what this life looks like. And God, forgive us when we try to do everything but, when we try to impress you with all of our religiousness, building fancy things and doing important things. And ignoring the needs of others. The one thing you've called us to do. God, fill us with a love and a hunger to share your love with others. To care for people, God. Convict us where we haven't been building our lives around you. The things that we put into it for ourselves, our selfishness. Help us to release those things that we can build a life that cares for others. That is focused on others. Father God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for the life and death of Jesus. That in him we are made new. And that as we live in step with you, we will see your kingdom grow. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're not able to get around to one of the crosses, Pastor Scott will bring the elements to you. You can just flag him down. But I invite you to pray and come as you feel led.
Heavenly Father, I just thank you and praise you, Lord, for choosing to not give up on us, Lord Father. You decided to send your son to the cross because you didn't want to lose the relationship with us, Lord Father, but you needed that sacrifice and you said, you know what, I love my creation too much to let this go. I have to do something. And Jesus went to the cross for us so that we could actually choose you every day. You didn't even change the rules. You still wanted us to follow you freely on our own uh, choice. And Father, but Jesus died for us. He changed everything. Father, I just, this has been on my heart all week. And Father, just that we would never forget or take advantage or lose the reverence of what you did, Father, and just that, yeah, you loved us. You cared for us so much that you decided that this is what needed to be done. And Father, just thank you so much for that. In Jesus' name. Would you please stand with us one more time as we close?
we just sang it. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. Jesus is inviting us to understand life, and he's told us what it's supposed to look like. We don't have to guess. We don't have to wonder. He's inviting us to see others like he does and to share our life, his life that he has taken, we have given to him, to share it with others. Who is he putting in front of you to care for? What person needs a conversation, needs help, needs a hug, needs support? Let's see the need. Let's be ready to move. Amen? Amen. Go with God this week. Thank you.